On this episode of What's Going On in the Workshop, we've got really rusty seals. You'll be shocked about what you see on this one. That one's been progressing well. Um, seals on this one, our Berkeley is sold, so we've got to do some work to that. And I'll tell you about what's going on with this breaker. Workshop update. Um, this is still on the holiday. We, so you've, got, you've got Jim behind the camera. Um, we're trying a different microphone setup today. The last time we got our new, um, our new mic that goes on top of the camera, I wasn't really happy with that. I don't like how that, that video sounded. So we're just trying something else. Um, it's early in the morning, heat is on. I'm hoping that's not going to be too much of an issue with the mic, but we'll see how this one goes and hopefully it's the answer. So let's go on and set the boys doing. So we're hoping this mic is just going to pick up us all at the same sort of levels. I know some people have been complaining about the guys being a bit quiet on the mic. That's because we've been using a lapel mic on whoever's sort of talking on the video, which has been either Chris or myself. Um, we could have separate ones on every guy, but that's going to be a real pain when it comes to editing the video because I'm going to have to line everything up. And when we get videos that run, that have recorded, say I've done recorded like four or five videos beforehand, it's going to be really difficult to work out which voices are with which video and stuff like that. So ideally I want it to all be on one source, which is what we're trying now. So anyway, right, Roy's been, um, he's been working on this, this Mark 1, um, it's quite a late Mark 1. It's had really rusty seals throughout the whole length, just to give you an idea. This was the outer seal underneath the door area. Um, so you can see where he's cleaned it up on the outside, apart from this horrible sort of stone chip paint that's been put on there to try and cover things up, didn't actually look too bad, but obviously it had actually gone on the floor to seal panel pretty much the whole length so we could see inside and that's what we were looking at inside. So we, we spoke to the customer and the customer was wants to keep the car um, and he really wanted us to, to ch cut these seals out and go ahead and do it the right way. So let's have a look at what Roy's done now. So if Roy just runs through it. <coughs> uh, so, as Gareth said, it was, it was rotten from the floor panel to the sill, pan, uh, sill panel. So if Jim can come underneath, uh, you can see that from this section to this section here has been replaced the full entire length down to here. Uh, we've also replaced section of the upright which welds to this panel and between this panel and then from here to here we welded a complete new seal on and then next job is the box section on the back which I have here and that will be going in that area there obviously welded in smoothed in a uh, new set end plates gone on and uh, next half that is arch and outer panel and unfortunately it's the same on the other side <laughs> so it's an uh, ongoing project yeah well, we might have a look at the other side quickly because that will give people an idea of what it's like beforehand so when you so when you look at this i mean the first sign that something's not right is that the black line should finish here so someone at some point has taken it up higher uh, which is a, an indication that things aren't quite right. Also, this sort of rust that's starting to come through this this sort of whatever this coating is, stone chip coating, whatever you want to call it, um, that's starting to come through there. The really good sign that things are not good inside is this deformed lower lip. Once that starts to either bend over or or sort of arc up like that, it's always a sign that the inner structural seal isn't in very good condition. This will never move if that isn't rusty. So if you're ever looking at a car and that's deformed in any way, you know that there could be hidden problems inside. It should support the jacking up of the car. So, um, and then moving on to the front, this is, this is really, really typical now. What we're seeing is once you get those front wings off, um, you've got this sort of problem to deal with. Often it will clean up. We'll look at another car in a minute and it doesn't look so bad as this. Um, often it will clean up and put some sort of rust killer on it, a treatment coating and then a protective coating and uh, 
and you'll and you'll be okay. This car, I'd imagine, once we clean it up, boy, that'll probably have pinholes in it. Won't it? it probably will do. It's actually got it's as actually print pointed out to me just now. It's actually been worked on before. It's got a massive bulge that comes down here. Uh, it seems to finish about here. Right. And there's a slice already in there. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. And the sealer has all been. Didn't you find that on the other well. side where they'd cut through the they reinforcer? Had, yeah, well, they'd done. They'd, uh, someone had done a bodge patch repair and they'd cut, I think it's around this section, they'd actually cut a piece out and they'd cut through the inner panel as well right. and then attempted to weld it up and then put a patch over, welded the patch to the inner panel as well. It was uh, a bit of a mess. Yeah, you, a bit you of a mess. rebuilt all of that inside there. I had to rebuild that inside as well, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of filler. As so well. If we look underneath, if Jim can get under here, you can see some of the evidence of, so there's a patch repair here. Um, about to there somewhere and then it's just and then it started to go just after it so this is all part of did you run I walked off to try and find a torch when you were talking about did you run through all this yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah again we're, we're gonna do the floor to sill panel again yeah. all the way length and we're also going to readdress this as well do that correctly because yeah. it's not too uh it's not well, too well, more problems inside there anyway yeah exactly we'll exactly okay um, so yes all right this is the same again jack the point all the way down Okay, well let's move on to, because Roy's going to be, he's going to be coming off of this car today. Um, we sort of got it to a point where that side's structurally sound now. Yeah. He's going to have to come off of it and for the rest of this week he's going to be working on this car. You've seen this car before in one of our, one of our videos. Um, this is a car, a Berkeley that we, we purchased. Uh, probably a month and a half-ish ago now. Really nice low mileage one, one owner from you. Um, but unfortunately it had not a great repair on the back and that was starting to show through again so and the seals were uh, sorry the arches were literally on the on the lips were just starting to go so we don't sell rusty cars so it's all being dealt with and this car has actually sold now so it's going up and up onto a boys ramp to get to get the uh, get the welding finished off and then it'll go off to paint but you can see it's going to need um, a typical repair of the inner structural seal needs to be done. This, none of this has been repaired yet, this is just literally the first stage was to cut out all the rust um, which has been done. So it's now a case of start, starting to rebuild it which Roy's going to start to do later today. And the wheels will get refurbished, painted, we'll blend the colour onto the door so you don't see any difference in colours there. And then that will um, that'll be going to its new owner. New owner incidentally came down to us yesterday um, from Edinburgh, so it couldn't be much further away without getting wet. Um, and he, his car was was just beyond. Well, it wasn't beyond repair; it was beyond financial repair. So it just made much more sense to him to to, to buy this from us. So that's that's what he's decided to do. This one here, this is one of our breakers. You might have seen it on the website. Um, we had a customer come in to us where he's he's got. I can't remember the name of the car he's got, but it's it's like a sixties fiberglass bodied sports car um, but all he's got is a shell kind of looks i'd say it kind of looks a cross between a e -type. no not an e-type right. it's, it's more like a 356 porsche 911 cross kind of thing um i'll kick myself when i do remember what the name is but anyway he need all he's got is a shell so he needs all the running gear he's, he's measured it all up he thinks an mx5 will work for it so he's bought this pretty much more or less as it is off of us. We're going to take a few of the panels. He's also going to use most of the interior. This was a um, an S Limited, and let's move this little page out of the way. And it's uh, got a nice red leather interior, which is going to work well. I'm going to blind myself with a torch. It's going to work well in in something of that sort of age. So he thinks he can use quite a lot of that, which would be good. So it's good to see that going to go on to something interesting hopefully he'll show us that when he's done it um, right okay so uh, let's move on to the one on Jim's ramp obviously I'm going to have to talk for this because Jim's behind the camera usual thing so same story didn't look too bad until you start cutting it open and then we've got inners um, sill end plate lower and rear box section needs to be done other sides the same Arches aren't too bad, although I think the customer's spoken to, he sent me an email about talking about maybe rolling these arches, so we'll see if he's, I've got any replies to him today. And spoke about on the one on Roy's ramp, you see that this one's at the front here, not so bad. We're putting new wings on the front of this as well, so we're, this should hopefully just clean up and it shouldn't be a problem. 
Um, this one here that's been on Chris's ramp while he's been on Ash, he's been working on it. We showed the other side, I think, in the previous video. This side, actually, is, I think we might have shown you starting on this in the previous video. Yeah. So now it's, all the welding's done on this side now, looking really nice. Come around here, Jim, it's all sealed up as well. Lower ceiling plate's been done. And rear box section and jacking point. So all the um, really crucial, a lot of people don't don't get this right, but sealed drains look really good there. So they've all been recreated all pretty much as original. Right, moving on to this one. This is the exciting one. That's why I've left it till the end. So we kind of had an inkling of what this one was like. Um, actually started digging into it, becoming Jim. So this is this is a typical bodge. So if you if you looked at that beforehand, before that was any work was done, if you look under here, Jim, you can see not necessarily much to worry about. Looks like it might be okay. So actually started digging around the back here just to release it. So was there spot welds around there? Uh, yeah, the, the original ones were there, buried. Yeah, and then also oh, the original ones were there. Yeah. So the, this is okay. Right. Well, I better let you talk about this thing because you know a bit more about it. Yeah. So all that was at the back was just the original spot welds from the original metal. There was just they were barely holding on, but they were sort of still holding on. And the rest of this back edge was just filler. Um, if you sort of look in the top, there is a lot of filler in there. Um, it, What's that about? Ten mil thick in places. Yeah. It was sort of I was cutting through it and. You have to be careful when you're cutting through here because you've got the internal seal behind the inner seal behind it. So you have to be careful you're not going through both layers. And when I was cutting through this, the filler was so thick I was, just didn't know what I was cutting through anymore because there was no way I should have had to go in that deep to get to metal. And it was still a case of us still doing it. So, so do we think we can just pull that off now? Yep, I think we can. Let's go through. quite shocking really that's a seal and that's not even really attached nice big so is it literally filler. just filler um, no it has had a, oh, patch. Had a plate. sort of welded in there and there's some rivets here on the bottom rivets nice yeah it's obviously so it wasn't even welded then no on the bottom they've obviously just riveted it so. but they've riveted into what is a rusty inner seal really haven't they yeah, yeah. whether it was at the time i don't know and then loads of sealants that also helps stick it on the amount of, yeah, look, you can see the, they cut into the, if you look here, Jim, look, where they've, where they've welded that plate in, that must have gone from there to there, maybe, because there's two cut lines in the inner seal there, unless that was a test one first. No, nope, we've got two patches on here. Oh, two patches. Oh, one great. there, and then there's one at the back edge. <laughs> Why did they do that? And, and a massive <laughs> filler as well. So, yeah, um, can you see that right on the camera, Jim? Mm -hmm. Without the torch, someone hold the torch. So yeah, I don't know if you can just if you can make that out. So there's one plate there. So that's the top. So that went down to the bottom, and that's I guess that's where a rivet was. Um, and then there's another plate there. I don't even yeah. There's a bit of welding wire there, so there is a bit of weld. And it goes up higher than this, doesn't it? So we're going to have yeah. to go up higher um, than that. But why? I can't understand the logic of that. Why anyone would weld a plate there and a plate there and leave that bit in the middle? What what is the point in that? It's pretty obvious that that's going to be the next bit that's going to go. So, um, yeah, they've done a cut there as well, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. So, let's just get um, the little sort of tappy hammer and just see if that will just go through now on the, on the seal. So is that just pure filler on the floor? Um, <coughs> yes. yes, that's just a lump of filler. So it didn't look too bad, did it? And um, really, I mean... For the, for the camera, but that's, that is going to be an inner as well, most yeah. likely. By the time that's all cleaned up, that's not going to be a lot left of that. Um, we, we are doing a whole arch on this car as well, so again, it doesn't look terrible, but customers asked us to do it. In fact, it feels really odd back here as well. Yeah. Something's happened to that. You can see spot welds, but I wouldn't I have think said it's they're the original. inner arch and it's 
blown out and it's distorted as yeah. a rust trap. But it feels like it feels like that's full of sort of silicon or something up there. The back there. Yeah. Okay, well, so be careful out there when you're buying MX5s because that really didn't look that bad. Um, I think we would have noticed that something wasn't quite right, but I don't think we would have guessed exactly what had happened in there. So be careful. Um, keep tuning in. Learn more about how they go rusty and what to look out for, and then you'll you'll be in a bit better situation when buying an MX5. Or of course, just buy one from us. So keep tuning in. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Thanks.